Hey, this is Anthony from Absolute TV. You can watch Decide and Ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Shoei Hornet X2 helmet available at Revzilla.com. Welcome to the 21st Century Shoei. This is the new X2, the replacement, finally, for the Shoei Hornet DS. Now, to my left on the table, you're gonna see our matte gray, our gunmetal, Hornet DS. The design of the Hornet DS is pre-2010. Love the helmet, been a staple in the line. I met with Shoei years ago, and they said, what should we do next? I said, redesign the Hornet. We've seen other manufacturers really up their game, and it's nice now to see Shoei play a little bit of catch up. Now, to their credit, the Japanese are very definitive in what they bring to market. They refined, and they are usually extremely specific. So I'm sure this is the 782nd iteration of what was ultimately going to be the next generation of the Shoei Hornet X2. And if we look at it, welcome to the next generation of Shoei Snell 2015 standard, a new aggressive scheme on this. You're going to look at the aerodynamics to be much improved over the original Shoei Hornet DS, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. But if we really think about some of the other big changes here, there's a quiet factor that is much better suited for road riding. So again, taking the DNA from the off-road and refining it for multi-season adventure touring. And then there's a comfort feature. The balance of the helmet is going to be much different. It's going to be much more balanced at speed. It's going to stay stable. They've completely redesigned the peak, as you can see, both from a style and aerodynamic standpoint. And then when we get into the guts, it's using the new 3D Max Dry 2 system, which again, compared to the best components that were available pre-2010. Standing on the shoulders of the technology now, the 3D Max Dry 2 system on the interior is going to be wonderfully constructed, extremely lightweight, it's going to feel great against your skin, and it's going to wick. Also has that antimicrobial property to it. So again, lots and lots of changes, and really our only nitpick as we work into the nuance of this helmet is going to be the fact that the weight has increased. So you're looking at a helmet that at a medium level on the Shoei Hornet DS previously was three pounds, eight ounces. The new Shoei Hornet X2 is gonna come in at three pounds, 15 ounces. So you've actually beefed up about seven ounces, but in our opinion, how they've made up for that is in the balance factor. The way that this is constructed and designed at speed, highway speeds, think 50 plus, it's actually going to neutralize and self-balance and you're not gonna feel any of that sail factor. It's not gonna pull. It's not gonna be weighted in the back or too heavy in the front. At speed, it's gonna feel great. Where it comes up short in our book and where you might look at another manufacturer that's thinking more in the off-road vein, this is gonna be if you're spending the bulk of your time standing on your pegs at lower speeds off-road. It's gonna perform well, but it's a little bit front-loaded. You're gonna to start to feel that weight a little bit more. That would be our big gripe. Other than that, as I walk through it, you're gonna you're gonna find there's a ton of additional changes from the way the shield is constructed, the way the side pods are done, to the way the venting schemes work. Even the pin lock has been upgraded on this latest version of the X2, the flagship in the multi-season adventure touring and DS line from Shoei. Now, let's talk briefly about fitment. Intermediate oval is still the name of the game. Slightly longer front to back. Should fit most of the American market, unless you're really, really wide, or unless you're really, really long, you should be good to go. You're gonna feel it in the cheeks. Again, it's that more off-road DS fit. So again, it's very form-fitting, but it's comfortable, and you have a bigger field of view. I'll also say this with regard to fit. The thing that jumped out at us outside of the comfort liner, which you're gonna see, which is really, really a big upgrade here, you're gonna feel it differently around the crown and the top of your head. So the EPS, it's still gonna be dual density, it's still going to be multi-layer, but around the crown of your head, the way the comfort liner is integrated, it's still 3D, you're gonna feel more even pressure. So around the sides, across the top, you're gonna feel it cradling your head. So in our opinion, that really does contribute to the fit. And if you're intermediate oval, you just have, you're gonna have a better supported ride, better even distribution of that weight, again, through the way that this, this helmet contacts your head. Now, when we think about fitment, if you're concerned, use the size chart. But we're going to ship free over 39 bucks if you're worried. And again, this guy's gonna be one of those more Apex style heirloom investments that you're gonna get three to five years out of. But again, you're looking north of that four or $500 range. And keep in mind too, as I work my way through it, click our logo right there. This is not a suggestion, I'm asking, Subscribe to us at Revzilla TV, leave your comments, your questions, your feedback on the new X2, but also keep up to date on the latest gear reviews we're constantly rolling out. Now, let's start from the outside, we'll work our way in, let's walk through it at a detailed level. The first thing you're gonna notice here, is really the refined profile. And again, if we look at the previous model, you're going to see that was basically a sphere with a peak, 
and again, it didn't really have any off-road specific qualities to it. Now you have a very aggressive, almost hawk's bill attack on things on the new helmet. You also have this ridge across the back that's going to do a great job at keeping your goggle strap in place. One of the things I really like that they did here is that you can use this shield with a goggle strap on and then put it down if you get yourself into trouble. A lot of riders that spend a lot of miles spend a lot of time with their goggles on off-road and that they hit a really bad dust bowl or dust cloud, they're gonna just flip down their visor. Again, you have the ability to do that and your goggle strap's gonna stay in place. They're stealing that DNA from the outer shell on that VX Pro series from Shoei. You're also going to see along the front, the big thing here as I tip it down is you're gonna see the gills. The gills along this removable, replaceable peak, they're going to keep this stable at speed. They're going to allow for that right amount of air to pass through them and create a great aerodynamic profile. Again, allowing you to balance the weight of the helmet and almost counteract that Z coefficient that wants to lift it backwards. So again, you're going to get the best potential for balance air. If we look at the way the shield is designed, still optically correct, tying in from the front. And if we move our way around to the back, you're gonna see there's actually seven vents along the back. We're gonna talk about the front venting in a second, but what they've done is they've expanded the profile. The previous version had a few vents in the back. If you'll notice, again, very simple towards the top, but on the new X2, two vents on either side. They added a little you know, style points here for adding these gills coming off it, but two vents on top. You'll see when I open it up, there's a lot of different vents on the inside of the EPS channeling that air in. And then as you move your way down towards the bottom here, notice we threw a Revzilla sticker on there. You're also gonna see three exhausts that channel all the way down along the back, and those three exhausts that are gonna extract out that way. So remember, Sphere moving at high speed, area of low pressure is gonna pull warm, moist air out of the helmet. Now, if we move around to the front, you're going to look, completely redesigned chin vent. And this is one of my other gripes with this helmet. Really, if I have to nitpick, I'm gonna say that the vent actuation is a little loud and it's a little small for my taste. So on the front here, very simple, vents to face and visor or closed. It's really only two position on or off. As you move up along the top end, of the brow here. You're going to see a classic show event. This is something they've been doing forever. It's going to vent to the brow, vent to the face. You're gonna get airflow through the front of your forehead. The other thing to keep in mind is the vent on top here. And you're gonna see here's the actuation for it. This is gonna be the top chimney vent, so to speak. And where the intake for this is, is on the front. And the nice part is it's completely open or completely closed. And I can actually remove this as well, which is a really nice touch. The whole peak system is going to be breakaway. So if you break this off, it's removable, it's going to be replaceable. This piece on top is completely breakaway. And what you'll see here, as I vent actuate there, open and closed, and it's completely closed. Now this one's a little easier to find with a gloved hand, and you're gonna see when I remove the peak, the hole on top, but the nice part is, again, they're giving you a shot to keep this intact and in better shape longer by being able to replace it. Again, when you get into higher end products, you then have the ability to replace some of the parts and keep it running and keep it tuned. Now, if we look at the side profile, plenty of room to mount a comm unit, which I like. Some of these DS helmets are going to be a little bit angular in the way the ridge system goes down here. So you could clamp mount or you could sticky mount. And from here, let's work our way into the peak and let's work our way into the visor. Now, I already mentioned that's going to be optically correct. And again, they've broadened it. It's a big field of view here. It's gonna be flat. You're not gonna get the distortion. Again, that's what we've seen as a staple from the Shoei line. They're already doing that in the previous DS version. But what's nice is you have these pin lock posts now, and there's gonna be a pin lock lens in the box. And this is the first Shoei helmet that we're seeing with the pin lock Evo system. Now remember, pin lock is the system that works with a shield that allows you to get away from fog-free coatings and actually create a barrier based on the laws of physics to keep the helmet from fogging. Pin lock is redesigned. It's six times more effective now with the new Pinlock Evo system, and you're getting that lens in the box. We don't have it installed here, but again, it comes stock, keep that in mind. The other thing that Shoei did is they added an actual lock, which they didn't have before, and this is the CNS2 system on the shield here. So as I move it up, you're gonna see these detents in action, but the nice part is that you'll see how it moves right over here on the hinge. Each time it moves, it detents, and when it comes down, it locks in, and that lock-in creates a great seal on the redesigned seal or weather stripping that goes all the way around the helmet. So this is going to be beefed up. And again, this is what's gonna save you if you get caught in a cloudburst or you get caught in inclement weather. The beefiness of the seal and its ability to spring-loaded lock in with that new base plate system allows you to create that tight seal. The other thing that's a little harder to pick up is they've increased the rigidity on this polycarb shield here. Across the top, you're going to have this large ridge that comes into play. It decreases the flex on the shield. Again, it's a bit more protective, it's a bit more sturdy, it's gonna stay stable at speed, create a better overall seal as you ratchet it down. Now, moving on from the shield, which I'll tell you too, 
One of the last things about it, and I almost forgot, is the fact that it's not connected to the peak. If you look at the way this base plate is done, it is actually freestanding. So you can remove and replace this shield. Go for light smoke or dark smoke or silver on the fly without removing the peak. Some of the other DS helmets that are on the market, even if we look at the previous model here, so I move it to the side, the previous DS, it was a pain in the ass. You had to pull off the complete peak from the top. You had to do more steps to be able to just change your shield out. What Shoei's done is they said, let's disintegrate the two. Let's move them away from each other, create two points of connection, try to keep the weight down, but give you the flexibility because really in this helmet's design, again, you're looking at that multi-season adventure touring rider with some light DS, but again, they're looking at it and saying, we have to have flexibility as opposed to just take our VX line and go dual sport, go enduro, go ride off-road. That's a different flavor. They're erring more on the side of the more flexible, more multi-season adventurous rider than that true enduro guy that just wants to spend the bulk of his time off-road. Now if we move in here, let's talk about the peak. They've redesigned the peak and its connection points. It's, it's now shearable screws, but they're going to be finger actuated and they're quarter turn instead of completely screwing them out. That's really nice. And what I do is I have the ability to just pop them off really simply. And then if we look at the top here, you can see this small detent on top. If I push down on that, my entire peak comes off that simply. I have the ability to remove this peak, replace this peak, take it off if I want to ride in fighter pilot mode and get a quick look at how this connects. The vent comes together, notice on the bottom there's going to be a foam panel to create a great seal. Again, that's aiding in the quiet factor. I didn't really harp on this earlier, but that's one of the big things we like is that based on the fact that it's more, it's more designed for more road riding, they really cut down on the whistle. Even in the way they redesigned this chin vent, which has gone more stormtrooper than off-road, it cuts down on the how, cuts down on the whistle. Again, that whistle gets annoying on a four or 500 mile day. If we look at it, you're going to have a peak that plays within that ballpark, and again, it's going to be completely replaceable as well. Now, if I look at the top here, Here's my connection point, tongue and groove for my peak, and here's my vent. It's gonna vent your EPS. Showy, if you're listening, I need a plug for this. It needs to be streamlined, it needs to sit in there. There are gonna be guys out there that wanna rock this fighter pilot style, and you need to be able to plug that hole, or else if you get caught in a cloudburst, you're gonna get some water in there. But again, that's my nitpick, and I'm gonna keep moving on because you've heard a lot of positive from me as they've gone in the direction of really refining this helmet. Watch how simple it is to reinstall my peak here. If I look, I'm gonna do line up my quarter turns and lock in my side pods. One, and on this side, you just line up the screw, and two, and I'm locked in, ready to go. I did that in real time. You watched me, I lined it up with my eye, simply locked it on, and you're good to go. The cleaning factor, the maintenance factor, is a big selling point. The last thing to jump into here when we talk about the shell before I move into the guts is the fact that it's four shell sizes across your size curve. So again, when you do those shell sizes that coincide neatly with the common sizes, what you have the ability to do is cut down on the weight by not having to have those bridge shells that wear multiple sizes. And again, the shell is going to be the AIM Plus matrix, which is the top end from Shoei, and that's going to be really composite matrixes. It's going to be that tri-comp organic resins, again, getting the strength up and the weight down, and your Snell 2015, so again, adhering to that new Snell safety standard while carrying the DOT moniker for the states. Now, if I move into my guts, I'm gonna tip it on its side, I'm gonna roll over onto my donut here. Now you can see some of the other changes. You now have a removable chin skirt, which a lot of guys really like to rock, especially depending on the time of the year and the temperature, and that guy slides out. You see that on both sides. Here, it pops out right there. You're also going to have re emergency removal cheek pad system here on the new X2. And again, we didn't see that in the previous model, and they've stolen that from their race helmet DNA. Look how simply this pulls out. So again, if you're out cold on the trail, you have the ability to have that EMT just rock it right out without having to wiggle, wiggle your head. And they slide out on the sides. You'll notice when I pull out, big contour to the cheek pad. Dramatically different contour, actually. It's got a huge, huge bend to it as it gets along your jawline. The previous version was a lot thinner. It uses a different density of foam. And again, when I look at that, I see a less supportive helmet over time. Now, when the DS came out, it was state of the art. Five, six, seven years later, a lot of new technologies that can be worked in, and Shoei has really looked at the best of those and made sure that to incorporate them in the new X2. If we look at it too, 3D Max Dry 2 system, different densities, different wicking material, again, in a higher sweat area along the sides of your face, your face, your cheeks, and then down along your jawline. It's gonna be even softer. So multiple materials, new style foam, better support contour, again, in the new system using the upgraded materials, and you're getting the emergency cheek pad removal system. Now, as I work my way in, I'm gonna start to break it apart a little bit further here, pull my other cheek pad, simply, that quickly it comes out. 
And if we start to look, the big thing I want to home in on, and this is another big upgrade over the previous version, is you now have the ability to tune it for a Bluetooth device. So I already talked about the flat panel on the side for sticky or clamp mount, in including how they did the bottom ridge or gasket here. But now if I reach my way into the ear pocket, I have the ability to remove this pad that actually shows a two to three millimeter cutaway where you can store the Bluetooth speakers. Nothing's worse than a helmet that you're using with all of your technology that by the time you get to your 100th or 150th mile, you're really feeling the pressure because there's not enough room between your ears and the outer shell or the EPS liner for that Bluetooth speaker to fit in between. It's happened to me, it's happened to me with other manufacturers. I gripe about it all the time. It's nice that they're giving you a definitive pocket that's also going to hold that speaker in place. So again, thinking about all the right things moving into the next generation from Shoei. If we move our comfort liner out, again, completely redesigned, connects at the brow, which I absolutely love, which means that you don't get any pressure points at the forehead. Look at the way that this is designed. Lots of cutaways in this 3D design that's gonna flow air, Lots of airflow at the top. You have your mesh netting around some of the areas to keep it together and add some strength and durability. And when we open it up, you see the red accent that offsets everything. But again, this is your new style liner. It's going to be wicking, cleanable, maintainable. Run it under some water, let it air dry. It'll dry really, really quickly or soak it and throw it back in for a hotter weather day ride. Again, you have them really investing at that premium level from a support comfort standpoint. If we look at the guts of the helmet itself, this is where you get into your dual density EPS done in multiple panels, but that's not the story here. The story is the multitude of vents on the inside that create that mohawk effect. If you see it all the way inside the helmet, they're gonna come in from the external channels, from the vents on the front and top of the helmet, incorporate that airflow, into your head, in your headspace, they're gonna suck it down along the back, and then they're gonna exit it down here along the base of the skull as well. So again, a multitude of vents working to circulate air. If you're wearing this helmet, chances are you're a more aggressive rider. You're not thinking about just your traditional touring helmet. You can go out and get a Neotech, get a Multitech. You can go down that route. If you're going this way, you're definitely thinking of yourselves through a more aggressive lens, and this helmet is now more functional to support that. The last pieces to keep in mind when we think about the guts, remember you have 10 vents on the inside. That's a big improvement over the previous model. The other nice part too is thinking it's a high-end helmet, you can get different size cheek pads if you wanna fine tune it for your face shape or for the size of your head depending on how you're built. Now remember, in summation, we believe the new Shoei Hornet X2 is going to be a big step forward in quiet, a big step forward in comfort. It's a big feature step forward, but again, the aerodynamics are a really nice touch, whereas the peak on the previous Hornet DS left a lot to be desired. Again, in my opinion, you're gonna do really well with this helmet if you're spending time on-road and off-road, but you're really covering a wide expanse. It's gonna help you minimize the feeling of that additional weight. If you're thinking about short enduro rides off-road, I think you're better suited with a VX Pro or one of the other lighter weight DS helmets that are on the market. But all in, we're very happy to see them finally refine their aggressive multi-season adventure line here with the new Shoei Hornet X2. Now, the next step in your journey is try to absorb everything I've just left you with. But the biggest thing you can do next is to click right here and read other rider reviews at revzilla.com and see what other riders who have put it through its paces, their opinions are on our site. Ton of reviews to go off of, that will build over time. As always, we're gonna ship for free over 39 bucks. And if you wanna to talk to a gear geek, see us at revzilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown of the new Shoei Hornet X2 helmet. Remember, subscribe to us at YouTube. Stay up to date with our latest gear reviews. We're constantly rolling out. I'm Anthony, we'll see you next time.